P over WAN and the challenges and the ways to solve these challenges. So let's have a look at those challenges. The first one, as uh, Nicholas already mentioned, is the packet delay variation, the so the so-called PDV, the packet jitter that affects directly affects the accuracy of the slave and the stability. It's sometimes al also called uh, uh, the dynamic time error because um, it can change over time. Uh, here you can see two examples uh, that have approximately the same the same scaling uh, on the on the y axis when you <coughs> when you transport ptp over a ptp aware path or a direct connection uh, that results in plus minus 50 nanoseconds uh, from a master to slave and on the right hand side you have a non ptp aware path just an example with the with a highly distributed um packet jitter um uh, in the range of plus minus 500 nanoseconds but of course it can be much worse so what are the reasons for packet delay variation? The first reason is there are queuing delays in non-PTP aware network equipment. So if you do not use boundary or transparent clocks, then uh, those delays uh, are not deterministic and not constant. So um, uh, non-PTP aware network equipment will have different delays when the PTP packets uh, pass through. Uh, the the amount of the delay depends on the switch performance and of course uh, of the traffic load on these switches. The higher the load, uh, the the longer the delay might be. Um, that's because a PTP packet sometimes needs to wait before it can leave the switch, in case a larger packet is sent out just before. So if in, in if this packet. Um, uh, might wait because um, a packet with uh, the full MTU size of let's say uh, 1500 bytes approximately has to be sent out on the port, um, then there will be a delay in forwarding this information. Another challenge can be the asymmetry between the receive and the transmit path. So in, this in those cases where the transmission of a packet uh, takes a different time than the receiver of the answer. Um, here's one example. You have one um, packet that you are sending from uh, master to slave uh, that takes uh, a certain time and uh, the other way around uh, there is a different delay. So in this case three microseconds in forward direction and eight microseconds in, in the backwards direction. So this can for example uh, be caused by a link speed conversion. If you have a 1 gigabit switch and there is a 100 megabit port also uh, within the chain, then there, is the, there are the two concepts, store and forward mechanism versus cut through uh, within this, this equipment uh, that leads to those asymmetrical delays. So you have a total round trip delay of 11 microsecond and the slave will calculate a one way delay of 5.5 microsecond but the real delay is actually 3 microseconds. So this will result in a constant time error at the end of 2.5 microseconds that you can directly measure in the time offset of the end node. But you never know this if you only uh, see it from the perspective of the slave. The third challenge uh, can be network path rearrangements. What does this mean? So you have, for example, two possibilities where the packets can travel from grandmaster to slave. Uh, the first um, path could be uh, via the switch 2 and 3 and then there might be the possibility that the link breaks up between uh, switch uh, 1 and 2 and then uh, a different path has to be taken. And this path might consist of uh, a different number of hops and resulting in an another um, uh, uh, asymmetry value at the end uh, uh, from uh, that can be seen on the slave. So what is actually then uh, seen uh, on the other side when you compare the incoming PTP traffic to a reference like GPS? On the moment where um, where um, the path rearrangement occurs, uh, then uh, different path asymmetries will lead to an offset step, what you can see here. So your, your slave will jump 
for a, a certain yeah uh, for a certain uh, amount and you have to deal with that when you transport ptp over wan so what can be the solutions as nicolas already said there can be solutions for the infrastructure um, to use, it's always recommended to use PTP enabled switches and routers, so boundary clocks or transparent clocks. Um, you can send PTP over a dedicated wavelength in, in w, uh, DWDM systems if you have the possibility to do so or get this as a service level agreement from a provider. Or you may be your own or able are able to rent uh, a dark fiber connection, but this is often not possible or very expensive. Uh, in this case, you don't have the effect of active components um, between between uh, your network equipment. But there are also solutions that can be directly built in PTP slave systems. So, for example, a high quality oscillator would allow um, long-term PTP statistics that you can collect a lot of packets and do uh, long-term measurements of the PTP incoming PTP and analyze the traffic while in the meantime the stability of the local clock can be maintained by the oscillator. And uh, the second way um, is of course um, using adaptive um, PTP filter mechanisms so um, that you can adapt to certain scenarios, have different filter algorithms for high uh, um, packet delay variation and other um, mechanisms for uh, a good quality connection. For example, what you can see here is a typical um, uh, night-day uh, change. Uh, if there is a lot of traffic during the day uh, in, a, in a data center or in a, in a yeah, uh, w w for example, this this example is from a, from a bank or a trading company. Um, then there you have much more traffic during the day, and therefore more jitter during the day than during the night. Uh, this is this is just one example where those uh, delay variations can change over time, and you have to cope with it. So another solution. Uh, would be to have some kind of asymmetry step detection uh, built in the PTP slave. For these path rearrangements that I uh, showed earlier, uh, where the, the, the route from master to slave can change and would lead to a step in the offset, um, then this step could be detected by the slave and taken care of. Um, if you have the possibility to do a calibration on the slave side against a reference, um, then this can also be um, a possibility to, to remove the constant time error on the slave side. Um, and uh, a, typ a typical device that does all this can be a, ga a specialized gateway clock for the PTP traffic, um, also sometimes called an edge grandmaster, which would then provide a clean PTP master signal to the local PTP clients at the remote side. So how would that look like? Uh, you would have, have one PTP uh, grandmaster on your original site, and then you might have um, yeah, a wide area connection with no or maybe just with partial PTP timing support. And on your remote site, there is another PTP uh, grandmaster that might also be synchronized to GPS. But if a GPS might not be available anymore due to disturbances or jamming or spoofing events um, uh, that could occur, then um, this PTP Grandmaster could use the PTP traffic from the core Grandmaster uh, as a backup and um, yeah, deal with the packet delay variation, the asymmetry and so on and would then provide uh, a clean PTP slave signal to all the clients um, on the remote side. So those gateway clocks can be a solution on the remote side to provide uh, a clean PTP signal and receiving a so-called bad one uh, from the network. So how could, could you test that? How do we test that uh, and optimize our um, PTP slave algorithms to deal with those challenges? 
um, you could have um, a so-called impairment generator, like the Paragon X device from Calnex, um, that can generate different um, jitter profiles. For example, from master to slave, um, an average of 100 microseconds of jitter, and from slave to master, there can be a different uh, jitter if you have an asymmet uh, asymmetrical um, situation here. This scenario would result in an asymmetry of approximately 8 microseconds that the slave has to deal with. So what does the slave then do to mitigate those uh, problems? So first of all, all the one-way delays uh, are measured over the network and collected um, in, a, in a statistical uh, way and uh, put into a ring buffer, for example. And then the slave would then select the so-called lucky packets, which are in fact the fastest packets that have the lowest delays. And uh, because the fastest packets are supposed to be the ones that have not been affected that much from queuing delays within the switches and uh, represent most likely the real delay uh, that would occur in those, um, in those connections. And uh, the lucky packet filter will then reduce this packet delay variation dramatically because it just throws away all the packets that have high uh, delays and just use, um, just use the fastest ones. So has, how does this lucky packet filtering work? You have a network with partial or no timing support um, that the um, um, PTP stack is receiving and uh, then you collect all the messages, all the sync messages that uh, you will receive and put this into a so-called lucky packet selector. And then there are only the lucky packets left that have the lowest queuing delays. And only these delays will be used for synchronizing um, the local clock. So putting all this together, uh, we did a three-day test uh, over a PTP unaware network with the specifications of the impairments of the jitter that I um, uh, explained earlier. 100 microseconds, uh, master to slave, slave to master, 60 microseconds, and an overall um, um, uh, packet rate of 64 PTP packets per second. So a general recommendation would be if you are sending PTP over a wide area connection is to use higher packet rates so that the slave is able to filter out uh, the bad packets and only use the fastest ones for synchronization. So this lucky packet filter in a first step already introduced the offset variations to uh, a result of plus minus five microseconds and then these um, uh, offsets are then going to a high-quality clock filter with a high-quality oscillator and that one reduced the jitter again down to a maximum of plus minus 300 nanoseconds uh, which have never been exceeded um, during this whole time of the three days of the test that we did here. So this is definitely sufficient enough um, uh, to, to work well in of course AS67 uh, scenarios, but also even in uh, SEMTI 2110 scenarios when, um, when the SEMTI profile should be used. So here you are still well below the uh, plus minus 500 nanoseconds demand uh, that the SEMTI PTP profile is, um, uh, yeah, is demanding for a master to slave relationship. So let's come to a real life example where this, where this has already been implemented. Um, the, the German public uh, broadcasting station WDR uh, used um, our equipment to transport PTP over a wide area connection to their local uh, radio studios. So uh, they used um, PTP over uh, an MPLS network with uh, 16 packets per second with a default profile and the, um, the PTP slave, in this case um, um, a, a gateway clock where a PTP uh, signal comes in and a different PTP signal with a different profile comes out and is serving an AS67 uh, and a Ravenna network here in, in, the, in the remote location. And uh, this um, scenario could then uh, remove the need 
for installing a GPS antenna on the remote location in Dortmund. So um, the result was um, that you can have approximately uh, plus minus uh, 600 uh, nanoseconds of um, input um, PTP jitter that was left after the lucky packet filter has been applied. And um, on the input um, uh, signal, you could also see one uh, real-life example of this asymmetry step that was caused by a path rearrangement uh, within the wide area network. And here on the next slide, you see um, the result that wha what the clock is doing uh, with, this, um, uh, with this input signal. It actually removed um, uh, this, this uh, offset step and uh, stayed at the same phase. And as for um, uh, A67, the absolute phase is not of that importance uh, as you only need to regenerate a word clock frequency from it. Um, then the, the absolute time error, the constant time error, wa was not, not of a big deal here. So the problem would only be if there would have been a step, but this step has been removed. And the output accuracy then of the lo remote clock um, for serving the local clients is still um, below 100 nanoseconds, which is comparable to a GNSS synchronized grandmaster, but here without the need of a GNSS antenna. So, yeah, the GPS antenna was not required here. So, a little overview about um, our solutions for these um, problems uh, when transporting PTP over WAN. Um, we have a modular um, a synchronization platform com called IMS. Uh, these are uh, GNSS uh, synchronized grandmasters, but uh, with a modular chassis um, where you can, yeah, mix and match all the input and outputs uh, as you want them. So you can create your own uh, gateway clock as a kind of any-to-any -any conversion of sync signals uh, with yeah, the most important module uh, is the, the, the PTP module in this case. can be a PTP generator or a slave, can also act as an NTP server and um, yeah, one of the most important aspects could be that you can have up to 10 of these cards in a 3U chassis to serve different independent networks of your remote location and it has also a uh, yeah, very high capacity. So it has uh, all the profiles that you would need um, for, for the broadcasting industry, the SEMT profile and the A67 media profile, but uh, of course a challenge is to um, yeah, transport the PTP over a wide area network and in, in, the, in a wide area network often the telecom profiles are used. So you could use um, a PTP slave module with a telecom profile and a PTP master module at the remote location that provides the SMT profile to your local clients. So this would be no problem when combining two cards in the same chassis. So and the latest, um, the latest uh, product line that we actually introduced is the so-called MicroSync. This is a compact synchronization platform. Um, we recently introduced um, um, a, a variant that is dedicated to the broadcasting industry that besides two PTP capable ports has also um, has also different legacy timing inputs and outputs like a black burst, a word clock, a DARS, or uh, yeah, 10 megahertz and PPS, um, whatever you need. So this can be a solution for smaller broadcast environments like radio studios or um, uh, OB vans um, is also um, yeah, a, a case where you can use that. Okay, and as a summary, uh, PTP over WAN has some challenges but these challenges can be solved um, when you design carefully your network and do some field testing before you go live. Um, and this scenario would also allow a GPS independent solution and allows for remote audio production with much less effort. So that's 